In this video, we're going to look at taking the imaginary number i to different powers. So let's recall what the imaginary number i represents or is defined as, and it's defined as the square root of negative 1. As a consequence of that, if we square both sides of this, we end up with an important fact that we're going to use, which is that i squared is equivalent to negative 1. All right, so over here I've got us started, and we are going to determine what all these things are. Now, the first ones are pretty straightforward. i to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1, and that includes i. And i to the first power, well, anything to the first power is itself, so that's i. i to the second power, we've got by definition over here, is negative 1. All right, we're off to a pretty good start here. Now we need to look at i to the third power. Okay, so we can use the rules of exponents with imaginary numbers as well. So i to the third power would be i times i to the second power. So this is like i to the first times i to the second by adding the exponents together. And we know that i to the second power is negative 1 by definition over here. So negative 1 times i would be negative i. All right, so i to the third is negative i. Let's try i to the fourth. Let's do purple. Well, there's a couple different ways we could approach this. We could say mm, i to the fourth is i times i to the third, or we could say i to the fourth is i squared times i squared. The strategy here is really to break it down into something we already know. We already know all these guys, i to the zero through i to the third. So let's see, if I think of it as i times i to the third, let's see, i to the third we've already discovered is negative i. So if I thought of it this way, that would give me negative i squared. I know that i squared is negative 1, so I would end up with 1. Well, that's kind of interesting. What if I did it this way? What if I thought of it as i squared times i squared? Well, i squared is negative 1, and i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. That way it was a little bit easier, but we ended up at the same place. All right, let's keep going i to the fifth. I think the easiest way to do this is just peel off one i, and then that leaves you i to the fourth, which is the last thing that we did. Of course, you could do i to the third times i to the second, or i to the first times i to the fourth. I guess that's what I did here. Um, different combinations, whatever, will give you i to the fifth. i to the fourth is one. And that's pretty straightforward. That just gives me i. Okay, i to the sixth would be i times i to the fifth. We just figured out that i to the fifth is i. So I have i times i, which is i squared, which of course is negative 1. All right, let's do a couple more here. I want you to see there's a pattern emerging without giving too much away. Let's see if I'm going to have enough board space here. I think I will. i to the seventh. Again, you could do i to the third times i to the fourth. I guess that one's kind of easy. Or I could do i times i to the sixth. You see how they're both the same? Let me write both these out. i times i to the sixth or i to the third times i to the fourth. Those would both give you i to the seventh. So we just figured out i to the sixth is negative one. So i times negative one would be negative i. If I did i to the third times i to the fourth, i to the third is negative i, i to the fourth is just one, so that'd give me negative i as well. Either way. All right, i to the 8. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently just to preview something else I'm going to show you. So I could do i times i to the 7th. I could do i to the 4th times i to the 4th, which is actually pretty easy because that's 1. 
Um, but I want to show you another way you could write it. You could write it as i to the second to the fourth. Because here we would multiply these exponents and get 8. Well, we know i to the second is negative 1. And negative 1 to the fourth power is 1. Okay, so do you see the pattern here? We have a repeating block of four different values right there. So we have 1, i, negative 1, negative i. 1, i, negative 1, negative i. And here's a 1. So based on that, it looks like we think the next thing that should happen down here would be i. Well, let's just verify that. Let's go up here, i to the ninth. We could do i times i to the eighth. i to the eighth we just figured out was 1. So i times 1 is i. And that is verified. Okay, so... You know, going through this, all this, up through the exponent of 9, I wanted to do that to show you this pattern. And we can use this pattern to help us out if we're doing something like, say, i to the something big. Okay, like, I don't know, four, 41st power or something. Let me see if I can use this to delete a bunch of stuff at once. Let me give that a try. Uh, yep, yeah, that kind of worked. Okay. I'm going to erase the rest of this stuff, and then let's see if we can use these values we have to do some other problems. So you notice that it repeats in a block of 4. So let's say I have something like i to the 81st power. So what you want to look at is how this power fits into this pattern. Okay, i to the 81st power. So notice, if the number is divisible by 4, okay, let me put a little mark here. Numbers that are divisible by 4, 4, 8, I guess even we could throw 0 into that. Um, that's where you start with your 1. That starts your pattern. I mean, you could have started it with i, I guess, but I kind of like to go 1, i, negative 1, negative i. That makes sense to me. But then you have to start it at 0 which basically means the number is divisible by 4. So if I split this up to i to the 1st times i to the 80th, all right, split it up to something that's divisible by 4. If the exponent is divisible by 4, then I know that that's going to be 1. You see what I'm saying? i to the 0 is 1, i to the 4th is 1, i to the 8th is 1. Um, i to the 12th would be 1, i to the 16th would be 1, i to the 20th would be 1, because those exponents are divisible by 4. So here I would have 1 times i, so I would know that this was just equal to i. Okay, let me show you another one. Let's say we have i to the uh, 70, no, let's not, let's do 53rd. So what you want to think of is um, what is the biggest number less than 53 that's divisible by 4. Okay, so 53 is not divisible by 4. Is 52 divisible by 4? Let's see, I think it is actually. 52 is divisible by 4. So we'd have i times i to the 52. This is kind of the same as 81. So since this is divisible by 4, that gives me 1. So I just end up with i again. All right, let's try something that's different. How about i to the... 30th. All right, that's a good one. i to the 30th. So what's the s biggest number less than 30 that's divisible by 4? 30 is not divisible by 4. 29 is not divisible by 4. 28, that's divisible by 4. So I'm going to split this up to i to the 28th times, and then I would have to be i squared. So i to the 28th, since it's divisible by 4, is just going to be 1. So I'm going to have 1 times i squared, which is negative 1. So that means i to the 30th is negative 1. So that's the general pattern. That's how it works. Um, you want to try one more? Let's try one more. Let's see if you could try one. I'll be quiet for a minute. Well, you can pause it. Let's try, let me see, let me think of something different. How about um, 35? i to the 35th power. 
All right, pause the video and see if you can get that one. Okay, so I to the 35th power. So I'm thinking of a number close to 35 that's divisible by 4. So 35 is not divisible by 4. 34, no. 33, no. 32, yes. So 32, and then I would have to make this 3. So I to the 32nd power, that's just 1. So it basically leaves me I to the 3rd, which I know is negative I. So really all I have to do is know these first four, and then I can figure out the answer. Now, what if you have a negative exponent? Should we talk about that? <laughs> Let's talk about negative exponents a little bit here. Let's get rid of some of this. There's a couple different ways you can deal with negative exponents. Okay, let's try, um, let's just try i to the negative 1. Well, I know this is 1 over i. Okay, then what you can do is multiply the top and bottom by i. And that'll give you i over i squared. I squared is negative 1, so that gives you I over negative 1, which is negative I. Let's add that to our list over here. So I to the negative 1 is negative I. Notice, negative I, there we go. Notice it's fitting into this pattern again. It's repeating this pattern just backwards. Okay. Um, let's say we had... Let's do one more negative one, and I'll show you a couple different ways to deal with it. Let's say we had i to the negative 30th. Uh, what I would do is I would think of this as i to the 30th to the negative 1 power. So I would just deal with the i to the 30th the way we did before. So let's do that the way we did before. So we think of... Um, I'm just going over here and just dealing with this. We think of the biggest number less than 30. That's divisible by 4, so that would be 28. So I'm going to split this up to i to the 28th times i squared. I know i to the 28th is 1, and i squared is negative 1. So that would just give me negative 1. So i to the 30th is negative 1. And then I could just take that to the negative first power. So remember, negative first power means that you're going to do the reciprocal and take it to the first power. There's a lot of ones there. Well, that's just going to give you 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. All right. You don't really see i to the negative exponents too often, but I thought I'd throw that in there and show you how you could deal with those negative exponents. The big thing to get out of this is that these powers of i repeat in this pattern. Uh, uh, 1, i, negative 1, negative i. Your answer to i to anything, whether it's positive or negative, i to any power, well, if it's a integer, all right, we're not going to talk about 1 half power or 1 third power, i to any integer is going to come out to be either 1, i, negative 1, or negative i. And it's just a matter of figuring out where the exponent fits into this pattern. I hope that helps.